we have a big increase on our numbers when it comes to saddle PE. We used to maybe get one every couple of months. Now we're getting a couple every week. Wow. Yeah, Philip, have they noticed the difference in the consistency of the uh, plot itself? That it's uh, less, uh, it's not as friable as a traditional plot. Uh, does it have the elasticity of the things that we've seen with the embalmers? You know, washing off to a white consistency. You know, that's a good. Thing. So recently, uh, just only last week, we pulled out one of these clots, and I tried with all my force in front of the room. Everyone was kind of looking. I tried with a good amount of force to pull it apart, and I could not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So here is here is another. Uh, mm -hmm. I Go think ahead, as well girl. from uh, experience from the uh, cath lab. Uh, have you seen anything like this before? No, sir. Was there a point at which you started to notice this? Because it's typically, I would say, unusual. As we go back on the pictures, um, we thought it was something that was just a fluke, something that just would go away. Um, so no one really paid too much attention to it. This was in 2021. In 2022, as we started to increase on our numbers, um, we then started to question at that point the changes of the pathology even like i said these vascular surgeons are in the field for 30 40 years and for them to look across the room and look at the clot that they just pulled out and to ask the room what is that we started then to notice there was something wrong wow take a that would explain this one here this is also vena cava. It is uh, a patient who presents also with a aneurysm, as you can see it drawn out there to the left, and then clot uh, above that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the aneurysm is here? Yes, and then that left side that kind of breaks off to the left, that is going into the kidney, the left kidney. Okay, yeah, okay. So this one here, left kidney, and then this is going down the vena cava. That's correct. Wow. Yeah, so I, I'm just stepping through some of the, the images here, Shankar, and getting some context. Um, any kind of link to a patient has been um, removed so that um, we can just objectively look at the um, the images because these are real images and try and um, and make sense of them. So here is, here is another one that you, you've got here. Yes, this is also um, right leg. Um, actually, no, I take that back. This is also PE. This is mm -hmm. the right lobe and those are the blood clots. And then to the left there is the actual device, that tube looking thing that goes mm -hmm. up into the lung, the right lung is a suction device, uh, somewhat like a vacuum that we then suck the clot out to save mm -hmm. their life. Yeah, and these clots here, so we can see what looked like the grape jelly, the typical grape jelly. Would yeah. this have had the abnormal consistency as well in these whitish parts? Yes, you can see the change, the transition there. You see the jelly clot on the, yeah, that lower part there. That's mm -hmm. what we always seen. But as it changes, as it turns white, that's where you got that those fibers-like material that is now embedded in the clot. Yeah, I, I, I find it very concerning, Shankar, that this is occurring anti-mortem. And um, how can we not be seeing it on angiograms, general routine angiograms? Because angiograms are done all the time. Any thoughts? Philip, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how that works because uh, the angiogram should uh, pick it up easily. It's an obstruction to flow. I, uh, well, what yeah, I mean is that maybe we're, maybe we're seeing should. them earlier. I think um, um, Dr. Shetty was right when he said it is a casting. So on angiogram, it's 
somewhat easy to only see a possible narrowing as the contrast still materials running on the inner. So I mm. believe that the fibers can be mistaken for the actual material, just like a vessel wall. Yes, because it's smooth. So when you look at the, the, the white fibers thing, it's smooth on the inside. So it, it almost lays along the artery. Yes. As yeah, quite right, as you said, Shankara is a cast. So I'm trying to think about what would cause it to do that. I just can't think of a of a replica disease. Yeah, you got a couple of things at play, Philip. You've got the uh, endothelial damage. So depending on where that occurs, uh, where the uh, offense occurs in the vasculature, that's combined with uh, this technology that's around uh, creates a reaction. And so it might that might that might be the reason we're seeing it in such diverse areas. I'd wonder whether the same patient would have it in different areas, or whether uh, each patient develops it in a unique area depending on the on you know the type of administration of the vaccine. I, I guess the thing that I'm trying, yeah the thing I'm trying to work out Shankar. So if you imagine we have this in plaque disease, so where you have the endothelial damage, you then have the plaque deposited. But if this is more like a cast, it seems to then grow and extend down the blood vessel, which a plaque doesn't really do. It tends to concentrate where the damage is. And so this is very, very unusual. And I'm, I can't think of a replica disease where we would see anything like this. So this is where you have to then step back and say, is this about the technology rather than uh, anything else?